Hey y'all, thanks for stopping by. I'm Infinite Enzo and this is Takedown Talk. Tonight we're taking a look at the Civivi Wyvern. This is an awesome little blade from Wii's budget brand Civivi. It's pretty excellent and I'm excited to show it to you guys, so let's get into it. Why the Civivi Wyvern? Because it's a stylish and unique design that is supremely usable at an affordable price. This is honestly the best experience I've had with a knife in terms of value for money. We have a beautiful hollow ground blade, nicely textured handle scales, and a deployment and action that will make you a fidgeting maniac. The Wyvern is a perfect example of how Civivi manages to implement several high-end elements into a highly affordable package. A big thanks goes to my buddy Wolfman Walsh for lending this one to me from his collection. So let's get into it and break it down, starting with the handle. The Wyvern comes equipped with textured and radiused FRN scales in a variety of colors. Wolfman went with the OD Green, which would be my choice as well, but it can also be had in black, red, blue, orange, and tan, as well as with a coated or Damascus blade. We can see here that the scales have been molded with a dragon scale pattern that equates to great traction in hand and menacing good looks. Overall, the fit and finish is quite good for the money. Not perfect, but there are no noticeable flaws. Construction is solid, using nested steel liners, and with its straight and rounded profile and full FRN backspacer, the ergonomics are excellent and lend well to long-term cutting. Contributing to this is the fact that the lock bar sits proud in lieu of a scale cutout, and I think that was the right decision for this knife. The lock bar itself is suitably thick and features just the right amount of jimping, allowing for easy disengagement with minimal effect on the ergos. Lockup is a comfortable 30% and feels nice and sturdy. Our blade steel on offer is D2, which is the most common budget steel coming out of China these days. That said, it is a great steel for the money, and its only noticeable drawback is its low level of corrosion resistance. Meanwhile, its high amounts of chromium and carbon yield good edge retention and reasonable toughness relative to introductory ingot steels like OS-8. I love the way Civivi has ground this blade. It is heavily stylized, but very effective. The fact that it is very thin behind the edge and coupled with a deep hollow grind ensures that this knife is a true slicer. However, some care should be taken with the tip as it is fairly delicate. Don't go prying with this one. There are two methods of deployment, a sizable but reliable flipper tab and an oblong opening hole that extends into a fuller. The flipper works pretty well, however, I think the detent is better geared toward the opening hole, which in my opinion is awesome. The blade flies open, whether using your thumb or middle finger, and there's something so satisfying about thumb deployment on a blade with bearings. Speaking of the bearings, they are caged, and while the blade won't drop shut, it will swing shut nicely. The pocket clip is a straightforward steel spring clip, and it is well done. There's nothing particularly remarkable about it, but it does have a nice appearance and it retains well in the pocket. Carry is limited to right side tip up, rendering this knife as somewhat unfriendly to lefties. It rides at what I consider to be the perfect level of depth. It's not buried in your pocket, but it's not sticking out too much at the top of it either. It comes in and out of the pocket easily, and will likely stay in place even if you were suspended upside down. Acquiring the Wyvern is very straightforward. It can be bought through pretty much all of the major online retailers, as well as Amazon and eBay. Its purpose of use is everyday carry. This blade isn't built to be a tank, but it can handle all the tasks that you regularly come across in your day-to-day -day life. I think Civivi truly accomplished the perfect value with this knife, and it shows how they've come to dominate the budget EDC market. It's fun, it's easy to find, there are a ton of options, it's attractive, and as we'll see in the takedown, it is incredibly easy to maintain. And hell, it also comes with a nice carrying pouch. So what are you waiting for? If you're searching for a great knife and you've got 50 bucks to spend, you cannot defeat the Wyvern. All right, y'all. Taking down the Civivi Wyvern, or Wyvern. Never learned how to pronounce that properly. In any case, this is a sweet little knife. Uh, big thanks to Wolfman Walsh, my good buddy who appeared on uh, Takedown Talk Episode 8. 
Uh, he lent this one to me. It's one of his uh, favorite EDC blades, and uh, I've really enjoyed it. And um, it's a great example of how awesome a knife uh, $50 can get you. So, uh, yeah, guys, without further ado, let's just get into it. So, starting off as always with the iFixit toolkit. Uh, you may have seen good old Nick Shabazz use this kit. It's uh, pretty awesome for taking knives down. It's got everything you need. Um, this Civivi has really impressed me, guys. I'm, I'm not gonna lie. It, uh, the action, blip, <laughs> the action is excellent. Uh, it's uh, got a lot of ways to deploy. We've got a uh, thumb hole slash spidey hole, if you wanna call it that, and a uh, flipper tab here. Um, my favorite way is definitely using the thumb. Uh, this thing just, there's something about thumb deployment on bearings that is just really satisfying. Uh, flipper's good too. I think the detent is just a little weak, um, but man, the fact that it does all three really, really well, that's like all that pretty much all you can ask for in a, in a fun little fidgety blade. So our pivot here, let's see. I think that's a T10. And y'all need to uh, go check out my, my good buddy Wolfman Walsh there. Y'all can find him on Instagram under the handle at Wolfman Walsh. Awesome dude, uh, knife enthusiast as well, and uh, big advocate for um, the lives of uh, wild, wild wolf populations. Something worth talking about, um, and his page is, is really into that. All right, guys, so that was a T8 on the pivot. And the rest of this looks like T6. Let me double check that. Nope, these are T8 as well. That's awesome. I like seeing that. Let's go ahead and pop out that pivot screw. Nice little Civivi branded pivot screw there. Come on. Not wanting to come out. Let me try going ahead and uh, loosening up the body screws here. I have been eager to get a Civivi of my own. I actually <clears throat> actually recently picked up the uh, Ferrum Forge Stinger. Uh, I'm sure you guys have been hearing about that. It's pretty impressive for the money and I'm not sure if it was manufactured by we or by Civivi and I'm not even sure if that makes a difference. I, I, I would imagine they would use the same factory for both lines but you know that's just me making an assumption so don't quote me on that but I've been really impressed with the stinger and equally impressed with this uh, this wyvern wyvern <laughs> Let's see if we can get that pocket clip out it's wanting to stick a little bit come on now come on there we go all right let's go ahead and try to pop that scale up scale comes right off all right guys so this is in I'm not sure if it's FRN, I, I think it is FRN. Um, in any case, it's an injection molded scale. It's very nice though, you guys can see that sort of fish scale texturing almost, which you know, is, is a call to the title, uh, title, a call to the name of the knife, the wyvern, it looks like dragon scales. It feels really good in hand. Another thing worth noting is that the scales are radiused, uh, which is really nice. Big, 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 big fan of that. <laughs> One of my favorite things is a radius uh, knife scale. Still having trouble getting the... There it goes. Pivot's coming. Come on. There we go. That was a sticky one. Okay. Let's try lifting the scale out. Actually, before I do that... Yeah, there we go. That's coming right out. Okay, you can see, guys, we are on a caged bearing system. A very nice looking caged bearing system. Let's see if we can pop this loose here. You know what I need. I need a, a tool to get in there and loosen that up. That's too thick. Let's try this side. Yeah, this will probably do. Coming from the back here. You know what, before we do that, nope, nope, it should come right out. There we go. Coming loose now. It looks like we have a set of receivers here. Oh, come on now. Come on. Okay, 
there goes our stop pin. We're just stuck on that last receiver there and it comes right off. Okay guys, so we see here a stainless steel scale painted black, uh, nicely skeletonized. Nice little touch there. Appreciate that, Civivi. Let me go ahead and organize things a little bit here. This is our, I'm gonna call that our right side bearing. Closer look for you guys. Nice cage bearing system. Uh, it looks like that's brass, uh, a brass cage. Not entirely sure. But in, in any case, it's, it's, it's nicely done. All right, let's come here, blade. And then if I'm gonna position the blade like this, I will put this up here and I'll put this bearing below it, just like that. Yep. Our stop pin here. And our body screws up there. Okay, let's get getting all that out of the way. Uh, as you can see here, we have an FRN back, uh, yeah, back spacer. Nicely done, pretty straightforward, nothing crazy. But you know, what I've noticed about this knife that I appreciate is Fit and finish for an FRN handle, it's pretty good. Uh, better than Spyderco, I'll tell you that. Um, I don't have an Endura with me. I used to have an Endura, so I can say personally um, that the, come on now, scale. Oops. Let's go ahead and get those pocket clip screws out of the way. The Endura had, I noticed, a lot of issues with its fit and finish uh, with how well the uh, the FRN backspacer lined up with the FRN scales. It did not look great. Okay, come on. That scale fits flush in there quite well. Uh, tight fit, which is a good thing. Come on. Come on. You gotta fight me. I'm trying to help you out here, man. Get you cleaned up. On that note, props to old Wolfman there because he's been taking care of this knife. It's nicely oiled and everything. So here is our opposing scale. Uh, interestingly, it looks like, from what I can tell, the receivers are mounted into the FRM. Uh, it's interesting, I like it. Um, I, I like being able to fully disassemble a blade, but you know, receivers, like it's not like you need to go around, you know, taking all the receivers down. So I don't mind those being mounted and it keeps them in place. It's nice. Uh, plus we can clean them right here I and mean, it's not a big deal. So that's pretty cool. I like seeing that. As you can see, uh, they are D-shaped receivers. Always a plus. So yeah, guys, that's pretty much it. Um, this is our exploded view. Let me get everything kind of tidied up here for you guys and, uh, and we'll get right to it. All right, y'all. The exploded view of the Civivi Wyvern. So let's get these parts cataloged. Got a stainless steel liner that is nested inside of a stain, uh, <laughs> excuse me, an FRN scale. Got our stainless steel uh, liner on the lock side, once again, nested within the FRN scale. Got a little pocket here for the uh, liner lock. And we have our FRN backspacer, our uh, pivot screw, our pivot, our uh, cage bearings, both sides there. Got our pocket clip, a nice stainless steel clip, uh, just a spring clip, but you know what? It looks pretty nice. It looks, in my opinion, looks better than most uh, clips you see coming from China. A D2 blade with a hollow grind. Um, you'll see here it's got a, this is the, obviously this is the thumb hole I mentioned earlier, but it's also got a fuller that continues from the thumb hole down the length of the blade. I think that's really cool and I think it also helps with, especially with um, middle finger deployment. And uh, we have our two body screws up here as well as our stop pin. That's pretty much it, y'all. This is a really straightforward takedown, and it's even better by the fact that the whole thing is done with the T8. I love it, love seeing that. Simplicity at its finest. Okay, guys, let's get this thing cleaned up. So for cleanup, just using a bottle full of soap and water. Uh, typically, I use a microfiber cloth, but uh, it's a bit dirty from some other work I was doing, so we were gonna go with a good old paper towel today. The D2, uh, on this knife has been holding up really well. I uh, did all my usual tests, which involved some little bit of um, feather sticking and uh, cardboard breakdown. And uh, yeah, sharp, sharp as can be. I also sharpen knives for, uh, for my good buddy Wolfman there. And uh, 
yeah, since I've been doing that, I mean, this one's held up great. Gosh, guys, yeah, this knife is making me, it's making me want to check out a Civivi. I've had my eye on the Rustic Gent for quite some time. Um, I am a fan of that sort of new, uh, new movement of um, taking traditional patterns and modernizing them. Um, just haven't pulled the trigger on it yet. It just hasn't quite, it's one of those ones that I keep opening the page and I keep looking at it, but it just hasn't quite snapped me up yet. However, if you are in the market for a, uh, just a budget EDC blade, man, Civivi has you covered, coming and going. Um, they have a lot, of, a lot of designs they do together with Ferrum Forge, which is uh, pretty exciting to see that. Um, Ferrum Forge does amazing work. And honestly, I think this knife is probably influenced by that. It has some of the things that you might see on a Ferrum Forge, like uh, you know, big noticeable finger choil on the front. The fuller and the thumb hole, that's a, you know, that's very, very ferrum. Let's clean off that pivot. That's the one thing I haven't really cleaned off yet. So yeah, guys, if you were in the market for, uh, in that budget zone, man, I, and actually, you know what, uh, my buddy Walsh, he, uh, when he bought this knife, he was looking at this as well as a Gerber and he asked for my opinion and I was pretty vocal about, you know, I felt like for the money Civivi was going to do better for him. And uh, personally, I'm, I'm glad he went this direction. I'll have to ask him if he's, but he, he seems like he's been really enjoying this knife, so I think he's been happy with it too. Alright guys, so we're all cleaned up. Um, I'm not going to be oiling this because with cage bearings, uh, I find that they operate best dry. I do need to clean these bearings off though. Good, good. Good grief, almost got all the way through here and I didn't clean the bearings, that would have been bad. All right, let's just move these around a little bit on our uh, soapy, soapy paper towel here. Man, I love just having to use one driver for the entire takedown. Kind of would like to see that more. I think, I think T8 really is perfect too. Like, you can have a big pivot um, I think the, the larger the pivot, the better. Um, but I will say, uh, I think T8's plenty. It's, it's plenty, plenty large enough uh, driver to handle a pivot. Okay, guys, so let's get this bad boy put back together. Um, I'm going to oil these liners. Um, no reason not to. And I will oil the blade as well since it's D2. Um, you know, and D2's not super corroded. Uh, a little bit of not super easily corroded, but you know, if you were to leave it outside overnight, yeah, you would probably get a little bit of corrosion on it. Uh, if you guys watch Kevin Cleary's videos, he talks about uh, he wears athletic shorts a lot, and just during the summer, he's sweating so much that D2 knives in his pocket <laughs> tend to start corroding. All right, nice and oiled up here. So let's get our uh, scale back into place on this side here. Simple enough, just drop it right in. Really nice fit, really nice fit on that. Okay, and we're gonna drop in our uh, backspacer here. Notice as well, you got a very slight lanyard loop there. Nice little touch there. It's not, not a super overbearing lanyard loop. All right, now, do we have a flat side on this pivot? I don't think that we do. Um, yeah, interesting enough. Oh, no, we do. Okay, so here, I'll show you guys. This is interesting. I've never seen it done this way. Check out that little, uh, what do you want to call that? <laughs> little tab right there. That is what is going to lock our pivot in place. Uh, nice touch, Civivi. Um, I suppose if you pushed hard enough, you could kind of shear that since it's basically just FRN. But man, that, that would be pretty tough. So here's the pocket that that tab goes into. Can you guys see that? on the inside of our pivot screw there, or not pivot screw, our pivot. So let's go ahead and drop that into place. The tab is on this side. Is that in right? Doesn't feel like it. Okay, here we go. You guys see it? Yeah, we can barely see it there. And we are in place. You'll know you're in place because the top of the pivot is going to be flush. Bottom sticks up just a little bit, but that's because of the radius design. All right, so let's go ahead and put that down. 
get our bearings back in. One thing that I do want to point out, one side of these cage of, the, of this cage is kind of open. Now I believe that this was the side, the open side was the side that was facing the blade. So let's go ahead and set it up that way. Y'all can see the uh, markings from where the bearings were spinning on the pivot here. So that's what makes me think. Either way, the individual bearings are sitting high enough that the lip of the cage is not going to be touching whichever side you have it mounted on. Okay, got that in place. Let's see here. I do want to, I think I overlooked the pocket for the uh, bearings on this side, so let's go ahead and wipe that out a bit. See if I have a Q-tip, if I have a Q-tip on me. <laughs> Make things a little bit easier, but I think that's fine. Yeah, it looks good. There you go, guys. All right, so we're gonna drop the blade in place here. And our second set of bearings. We'll go right there. Beautiful. Once again, guys, I do not oil bearings um, because I just find that it doesn't improve the action, at least if you're using a heavy oil like I use, which is mineral oil. Uh, it kind of actually gums things up. Uh, I imagine if you have a light oil, you know, like nano oil, um, that would probably work pretty well. So, you know, different different approaches. Um, if I had nano oil, I probably would give that a shot. Okay, so you can see our stop bar goes right there, right into that little pocket of the blade there. And next up, we'll put on our second liner here. With this way of taking it down, I may need to, it might slide in. Yeah, it's gonna work just fine. So let me just pop it in there. Yep, perfect. That worked great. Fantastic. Very easy. All right, guys, and now on to the second scale here. And let's get the Loctite out. Everybody's favorite part, doing the Loctite. Just a little bit there. You guys can see they were only using blue Loctite, which is always a plus. They were not using any crazy permanent red locker. All right, shaky hands. Oh, shaky hands. All right, got our first one in there. There we go. Gosh, guys, yeah, very impressed with this. Very fast, very easy takedown. Second body screw in place. Let's pop our pivot in. Actually, before that, we'll go ahead and pop the uh, pocket clip back in here. There we go. Nice pocket as well. A little milled out section there for the pocket clip to drop into. Can you guys see that? It just sits in there very nicely. This may be the first time in any of my videos that I haven't had to fast forward through the, uh, <laughs> the Loctite section. That's pretty impressive, guys. And you know, the only reason being two body screws on the entire knife. That's just, that's wild. Come on. All right, that'll be fine. All right, guys, and our very last, last but certainly not least, the pivot screw here. Oh, too much. Get that off a little bit there. All right. I have found that this knife is a little bit prone to blade play, you can get it out. It's not like, you know, it's not like a permanent thing. It just tends to, you wanna have it adjusted just right or you will get some play. Oh. All right, pivot on the other. Oh. Come on now, don't do this to me. Work with me. There we go. All right, let's check our play here. 
Little bit of play, but we are close. Let's try that. I don't know if that's play or flex. I'm inclined to say that it's flex. No, it's probably a little bit of play because we're not centered. And this knife does center up pretty well, so we probably need to tighten up just a little bit more. Let's try that. That's got it. Ooh, that action. That action is nice, guys. <sighs> yeah, no play. Man, I, this knife is impressive. And that is just from a simple, you know, take down and cleaning, guys. Uh, man, Wolfman Walsh, buddy, you got a, God, you got a good one here, dude. Um, Jesus. Again, I've said it before and I'll say it again. Knives like this, it makes you wonder why you spend more than 50 bucks on a pocket knife. This is fantastic. All right, guys. Oh, I screwed up the middle finger. We gotta, I gotta redeem myself. There we go. Okay, guys, I'm gonna sit here and flip all night. <laughs> on that note, um, hope you guys enjoyed the video. I hope this uh, helped you out in case you need to disassemble your own Wyvern or if you're thinking about buying a Wyvern. Uh, hearty recommendation from me. This thing is, is pretty awesome. Uh, fit and finish is superb. Uh, there's no crazy areas where there's uh, galls or, or where the, uh, the materials don't meet up properly. Everything meets up really well. Take down super easy, very straightforward. So yeah, guys, this is a winner. Um, this gets high marks. So anyways, once again, hope you guys enjoyed the show. Thank you so much for stopping by, and I will see you next time.